Yo, what's going on guys? It's Crimson here, uh, bringing you another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes content video. Uh, if you enjoyed part one of the series, you can. we're now doing part two. Uh, so part two, we are actually going to be making squads out of what we've gone over for your fleet commanders. And understanding what goes with what and so forth. Now, unfortunately, you have these characters over here where you can make squads. You can make squads for every little thing that you ever want to do however these squads don't attain to or pertain to ships you can't make a squad ship out of or a ship squad unfortunately i don't know why who the hell knows you know type deal but cg please fix this we've been begging you for a while so we'll go over some things really quick and and whatnot so all right endurance like i said before endurance Galactic Republic, Negotiator, Galactic Republic. We'll start there because, you know, whatever. So, like I said before, Endurance is not really used. There's not really any type of reason why you should use this as a capital ship other than the rewards that come with owning a 7-star and having Mace Windu at 7 stars and all that jazz uh, starting out. So, with Negotiator, again... This is a Galactic Republic symbol, like I said before, other using the tags and watching out for uh, certain, you know, certain symbols and whatnot and reading this stuff. Now you understand it's Galactic Republic. So let's navigate to uh, Galactic Republic. Now this, this varies, you know, type deal. So whether you're in TW, GAC, squad, whatever, this first lineup is different for all of them now in tw at the highest uh you know 450 million plus gp guild you know type deal we're right now at like 470 or something like that anyways what we use for tw in terms of defense is this we use anakin with obviously negotiator so we use anakin we use the y-wing and we use uh ahsoka now as a starting lineup and then we have Fives with the um, uh, Barian um, Starfighter uh, as a reinforcement. We have Plo Kloon's uh, Jedi Starfighter that comes in a reinforcement. And then we have Rex's Arc-170 as a reinforcement. Uh, this is probably... Not, it it kind of differs. So you have basically one tank and two attackers. Uh, or, you know, so forth. So you're going to get... You know, th that's basically starting lineup. Other people use a two-tank si system, which, you know, they use uh, Fives, Y-Wing, and Anakin starting lineup. And then they have Plo, Rex, and Ahsoka as reinforcements. Uh, no matter how you slice it, it can get some holds. It d all depends on your relic levels. It all depends on your mods. And it all depends on some RNG. Uh, for the most part, you can take out uh, this using Empire. Um, you can burn them to the ground, and then, you know, if they happen to pop uh, their quote-unquote savior mechanic, uh, the burning mechanic and the debuffs just kind of cancel that stuff out, and you can take out Anakin super easy in this lineup. Um there are it, it kind of differs if you're on the other end of the stick and you're not doing this on defense you're doing this on offense negotiator can kind of it, it won't stand a chance again executor lineup um you're kind of be taking out some you know other fleets maybe in an executrix lineup with empire um you can try to take apart empire with this but I, again it, it's kind of so it's kind of different. Most people use Empire to say for offense, because and this is a very good defensive team. Uh, it can be used for offense uh, type deal, but we're not going to go really much into that. The two ships that you pretty much won't need uh, is the Jedi Counselor Starship and Clone Sergeant. Now, if you don't have the Y Wing to seven stars early out in the game, no worries. Clone Sergeant using a tank in the beginning of lineup is just fine no worries on that um y-wing definitely definitely highly recommend seven star even though it doesn't have a crew member definitely 
recommend getting a seven star it makes it so much easier on the gas event it makes it so much easier later down the road for any type of metas or updates now with the new tb coming out we might or we may or may not see this used as this much but i know for special missions and for cms for light side tb they can go in and kiss my blank um Clone Sergeant was used as a beginning tank for offensive for a light side TB. Uh, CMs, you can still get away with this. Highly, highly recommend to use Y-Wing if you don't uh, donate it for CMs. And we don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, next thing, we're going to go to what most people have starting out, which would be an Empire lineup. Now, Empire is kind of cool. Yeah, if Executor... Most people use Executor with Bounty Hunters, so we don't have to really worry about that. So you're left with two others, Chimera and Executrix. I personally see more Chimeras than I do Executrix for GAC and TW. Um, they're sneaky when it comes to Executrix and can be meta for certain, uh, certain small little reasons. Kind of tricky type deal with that extra turn meter. Uh, but most time you're going to see Chimera on defense or offense or used or whatnot. Uh, now, for defensive preference, most people use uh, Gauntlet Starfighter, uh, Imperial TIE Bomber, and uh, Imperial TIE Fighter as the lineup. Um, and then they use the uh, TIE Interceptor, Advance 1, Emperor uh, Shuttle, excuse me. Uh, TIE Reaper, not so much, you know, type deal. Uh, if they're using Executrix, then Imperial TIE Fighter, TIE Bomber, and TIE Advance, and then you have the rest of these in reinforcements. An amazing, amazing ship right here, um, type deal. Really puts the the plus side on, on Empire for taking out, of, you know, taking out those pesky Galactic Republic uh, negotiator lineups, no problem. You could use Chimera for this. Um, if you're going against, let's say, uh, an Amoratus or any type of other kind of lower tier, you could use Executrix, no problem. Again, you're you're basically going with Termeter and AoE for alt versus one-shot KO healing and damage booster with Chimera. So you get a little bit more bang for your buck with Chimera, but... If you want to be sneaky and if you understand the mechanics of Termeter, Executrix is a sneaky team as well, um, you know, so to speak. So starting lineup, you're always going to have Imperial TIE Bomber somewhere in there, and you're always going to either have Imperial TIE Fighter or TIE Advance as starting lineup, and then the rest can be um, definitely like reinforcements. All right, uh, I guess we'll do Rebels next. Rebels, another big thing. So you have two capital, capital ships here. Fleet Commanders, Profundity, and Home 1. Again, Profundity is meta right now. Awesome for both sides. Home 1 can still take out a heck of a lot of teams or, you know, finish up some broken teams and whatnot. Home 1 can still take out some, you know, meta stuff as well. It's tricky because you use both for both lineups for both capital ships. So if you don't have Profundity... Probably the starting lineup that most people use is um, Han's Millennium Falcon, the Rebel Y-Wing, and um, probably Biston's U-Wing or Cassian's U-Wing for the lineup. Uh, if you guys don't have those you know, characters starting out, type deal, no problem. You could also start with uh, Rebel Y-Wing, Millennium Falcon, and let's say uh, Biggs. Um, and then you can use the Ghosts and Phantom. Most time, people starting out, they're going to have Phoenix, so they're going to be using Ghost and Phantom anyways. Uh, you could use Ghost, um, you could use Biston, and then you could use, uh, or you could use Wedge, Biggs, and Ghost, and then throw in a reinforcement for Phantom. You know, if you don't have Han, you don't have Outrider uh, type deal. So you can kind of mix and match with these things. I think the meta for Profundity right now is Hans Millennium Falcon, Outrider, and Rebel Y-Wing. And then you have the reinforcements of Ghost, Phantom, uh, or Cassian, then Ghost, then Phantom. Uh, and those are the three reinforcements that you just need. If you're facing, like, Geonosians or something like that, then you can throw in, uh, you know, Wedge or Biggs just to kind of taunt and keep that stuff up. 
uh, kind of survivability until you get the ultimate for profundity, uh, which is a neat mechanic. It actually, you know, instead of relying on target locks with, you know, executor, you're going to be, you know, relying on uh, attacking at a turn, you know, which is a rebel, you know, uh, thing charging up the uh, their ult and uh, getting that critical chance up, you know, whatnot for uh, Outrider, which is a really cool ship too. Uh, it can be used with both uh, capital ships and whatnot. Um, so let's go to again. Most people don't use resistance. Again, you're only using four ships in resistance. The rest of your uh, your reinforcements have to be, uh, well, not have to be, but most of the time are scoundrels, um, which are Lando's Millennium Falcon, um, and then, you know, some people throw in the Old Republic with, uh, the Ebon Hawk, um, you know, kind of clean up some stuff, whatnot. Uh, let's go into Separatists. Uh, malevolence, they speak for yourself. Most people don't have high in a bomber nor vulture droids starting out for uh, new accounts. So they're going to be the triple, you know, Geonosians, and then they're going to have some other dark side uh, type deal. Buzz droids, they kill you, man. This team right here can knock out Empire like it's nobody's business. As long as you can take out Imperial TIE Bomber before the second turn of the capital ship from either Chimera or Executrix, you're golden. The rest of the team can be picked apart, no problem. Uh, let's go with Sith. Eh, I mean, other than Tie Advance for Tie Advance and Emperor Shuttle, you're not really going to see much this Sith ships. Um, you might see the B28 from Sith Marauder on maybe some Chimera for um, you know either a starting lineup on defense for TW. Uh, you might see kind of a, a leftover team for Executrix and using the B-28, Maul, and Sith Fighter as kind of like a, a backup Empire slash Dark Side uh, capital ships. You're not going to see much of these guys, but you might see a Maul ship, you know, as a reinforcement to executor with you know the the counter chance and kind of stealth i mean you're not really going to see too many of these things in in the later game but early game you can just have them to 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 have them type deal i mean it's not it's not super you know if you want to be a little sneaky with using a, a backup you know executor uh, executrix uh for empire and using some dark side stuff and you know Maybe you want to be sneaky with taking out Geonosians uh, with Malevolence, then you can use uh, the B-28 um, and using the Mines. Um, okay, but, I mean, it's not it's not meta. It's not, you know, concerning. But it's, it's cool to have all the ships, but you won't see too many of these. Um, again, Sith, Sith, Empire are cool. Um... Rogue One, obviously Biston and Cassian. Cassian's really good with uh, Profundity. Biston's really good with, uh, you know, a Rebel lineup uh, type deal. Both of them can be used. Um, again, Phoenix, you're going to have Ghost and Phantom, mostly Rebels. Jedi is going to be Galactic Republic. First Order. Now, this is a nice little team to have in your arsenal. And this team with the new... Uh, Thai Echelon, seven stars or four stars, whatever you have them with Foo. You can actually break apart a basic lineup with exec, uh, Executor with Admiral Piet. Um, kind of a cool, nice little counter to have. Definitely something people use in both early game and late game. Um, however, the gear requirements for SOKR, gear requirements for First Order in general is awful like you're talking about like i think it's something like 1200 or 21 i think it's 2100 uh carbontes and you know kairos and all that jazz for slkr and whatnot amazing galactic legend but the gear crunch for this team is so high that um you know, it might be an afterthought, but again, if you don't want to do the R9 or the R8 requirements for um, Executor and the metas and whatnot, get yourself the finalizer, and then you can start piecing, you know, taking apart those type of people, um, whatnot. Bounty Hunters. 
uh, which I'm not sure why, but the executors should be here. And the starting lineup, basic lineup for these teams is Houndstooth, Razorcrest, and Zandu Blood, with Z Slave 1 and IG as the reinforcements. That's basically the basic lineup. Now, you can change that lineup to a few things. You could do uh, Razorcrest, Zandu Blood, IG 2000, and then have Houndstooth and Slave 1 as the, um, you know, reinforcements type deal as a lot of people in tw and with this uh counter with this lineup so to speak the finalizer with first order you don't you don't gain a lot of you don't you don't you don't get the uh the damage output that you need to take out you know these teams so it's it's still very tricky with the triple attacker that's where your home one and your other attack of turn type ships so profundity and your rebels kind of come in play they can pick apart the triple attacker um some people use uh razor crest imperial tie bomber as uh, or the imperial tie bomber as a reinforcement which is okay kind of clears some buffs on the field and has that burning uh that's used in the event but it's not really used in the actual game five of first again galactic republic um, light side, dark side, you can kind of go from there. Um, we have absolutely no zero, but we have zero neutral ships. Um, I, you know, with, with the addition of, uh, Hondo coming out, I really wish that they brought out his ship. Obviously it changes, uh, throughout the, the Clone Wars for, you know, just twice, but, you know, for the most part he has the same ship, um, or is running some sort of smuggler run type deal. And he could be a neutral ship, but maybe that's for another time later down the road. Um, so that's it for ships and some squads, some basic stuff. If you guys are wondering for some specific counters to certain things, we'll do that in part three. And uh, this has been Crimson, and peace.